Madam Chair, our next witness is Mr. Uh, William Mansfield. Uh, he's the Director of Intellectual Property at Abro uh, Industries in South Bend, Indiana. Uh, Abro Industries was founded in 1939 and currently manufactures and distributes uh, industrial automotive and consumer products. Mr. Mansfield is testifying on behalf of the Motor and Equipment Manufacturers Association. Welcome. Uh, Madam Chairwoman, Ranking Member Graves, and other distinguished members of the Small Business Committee, uh, thank you for the opportunity to testify here before you today on the impact of intellectual property on entrepreneurship and job creation. Uh, my name is William Mansfield, Director of Intellectual Property for Abro Industries Incorporated. I am here representing the Motor and Equipment Manufacturers Association and Abro. The Motor and Equipment Manufacturers Association, or MEMA, uh, represents nearly 700 companies that manufacture motor vehicle parts for use in the light vehicle and heavy duty original equipment and aftermarket industries. Motor vehicle parts suppliers are the nation's largest manufacturing sector, directly employing over 685,000 U.S. workers and contributing to over 3.2 million jobs across the country. Abro Industries Incorporated is a small aftermarket supplier headquartered in South Bend, Indiana. Now, if you've never heard of Abro Industries before, do not feel bad. Virtually no American has. Uh, Abro operates in a manner once common in America, but which is now almost unheard of. Uh, Abro has a variety of automotive, hardware, and basic consumer goods, such as radiator fluid, glues, and masking tape, uh, manufactured in America under the Abro brand name. We sell those items exclusively overseas, uh, mostly in developing nations. We do not sell any items in the United States. We have spent decades building the Abro brand name into a reliable identifier of high quality goods. Abro greatly values its name, which is registered in multiple categories in over 160 nations. Because Abro faces uh, counterfeiters all around the world. I run Abro's very aggressive anti-counterfeiting program, and I fought counterfeiters on six continents, and I'm always looking for a case in Antarctica as well, uh, on Abro's behalf. The magnitude of global counterfeiting is significant. International IP protection is about much more than Hollywood or luxury goods, though both will always be an important component of the battle. IP protection is also about the safety of a wide variety of consumer products, such as pharmaceuticals and motor vehicle parts. Counterfeit parts and components for motor vehicles pose a critical problem to the American economy and the supplier industry. MEMA conservatively estimates that counterfeit goods cost motor vehicle suppliers at least $3 billion in the United States and $12 billion globally in lost sales. And while protecting intellectual property is important for major multinational corporations, I would argue that IP is extremely critical for small businesses like Abro, which has only 24 employees, because a single incident could force a company out of business. A giant corporation can recover from a hit to its reputation. A small company does not have this ability. If counterfeiters have managed to undermine their brand name by selling low quality and or defective products under that name, they can easily be permanently damaged or even destroyed. Now it is common to blame all counterfeiting on China, and this is of course not the case. Counterfeits are also made in India, Russia, and other countries. Uh, we at Abro have been able to work with the Chinese government in enforcing our intellectual property, and they have pursued counterfeiters when our company presented credible evidence of our trademark being violated. There is a, a wide range of counterfeit parts and components for vehicles that are manufactured and distributed globally, which may result in catastrophic vehicle systems malfunctions, endangering the car or heavy-duty truck driver operating the vehicle, and all motorists traveling the same road. Trademark or brand infringement is the most immediate problem faced by many motor vehicle suppliers. Pirates also copy trade dress or the unique appearance of product packaging. Often they do not make perfect copies, instead making the packaging confusingly similar. Uh, to demonstrate, I have three cans of spray paint, a uh, genuine Abro product, and products labeled Ambro and Arbo. Uh, this example shows how hard it can be to, for the average consumer to distinguish between an authentic and a counterfeit good. MEMA supports the recent Intellectual Property Enforcement Coordinator's Joint Strategic Plan, which is the first ever plan to include a roadmap on how to address the challenges of counterfeiting and piracy of American IP. Additional resources are necessary to fully implement the plan, which will improve our nation's ability to combat counterfeiting and piracy. 
Our country must promote and defend a robust international system of IP laws and norms while strengthening cooperation with like-minded countries and key trading partners to promote shared IP protection. Uh, Congress should authorize additional resources for CBP and ICE to enforce intellectual property laws at our borders and support comprehensive, robust, anti-counterfeiting trade agreements. Finally, Congress should consider expanding the IP attache program. These contacts have generally assisted my com company in understanding local anti-counterfeiting procedures, gaining access to key foreign government personnel, and obtaining the necessary resources to fight counterfeiting in other nations. Uh, Madam Chairwoman, thank you again for the opportunity to testify today.